John chapter 3, verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but what? Have everlasting life. We're, we're talking from the subject matter of your life matters, amen? Your life matters. And, and so I want to get you to a point where you understand your purpose, why you're here, amen? We can see that all lives matter to God, whether it's black lives or white lives or brown lives or blue lives, all lives matter to God. The Bible says that God so loved the world, not just one, one uh, group of people in the world. He said he loved the whole world, amen? So that means that all of our lives matter, praise the Lord, amen? And we found out on last week that our lives matter to God, first of all, amen? God loved us so much that he has a plan for us. Somebody say he has a plan for us. Go to Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians chapter number 2, because I need you to see that before the foundation of the world was formed, God had a plan for you. Amen? So your life matters to God because he knows what he placed inside of you. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2, and for time's sake, I'm just going to read it out of the Amplified. Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 10 in the Amplified. It says, for we are God's own handiwork. His workmanship recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand for us, taking paths which he prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. So here I see that God already had a plan for us, amen? God had a plan before our, our parents uh, knew each other. And God knew that today you would be here to hear the word on your life really matters to God. Amen? Hallelujah. Then we found out that not only does my life matter to God, but my, my life also matters to others. See, see, God has this plan that he, can, he wants to show off his ability in us to others. Amen? The Bible says in 2 Chronicles chapter 16, just take a note of this, 2 Chronicles chapter 16 and verse number 9, that God is looking throughout the whole earth trying to find somebody that he could bless. Amen. To show off himself to be strong and mighty, the Bible says. So, so God needs us to be a representation of him. So he needs us just like we need him. Amen. But watch this now. My life matters to others because they can see God working in me. Amen. And then secondly, with, with your life matters with others, God wants to use you to get other folks saved. You heard Miss Kay say today that God wants to use us to be the, the people of God that will bring others to him. Amen. This is the generation. Somebody say this is the generation. This is the generation. This is the day for us to get folks saved. Praise the Lord. See, see, we've been waiting for somebody else to do it. And God wants to use all of us to be the, the catalyst to bring others to him. Amen. And then we found out that our lives matter to ourselves. Amen. Man, when we, when we think about the handiwork of God and we look at our lives and we see that we have been fearfully and wonderfully made by God, man, my life matters to me. Amen. Who Jesus, amen, that, that I am handcrafted by God, tailor-made by God to be who I am. Amen. And God needs us. God needs us to, look, to love ourselves so that we can love our neighbors. Amen. And so I see, I see in the Bible over and over how people, how people's lives matter. You remember Joseph? Joseph, even when his brothers uh, were jealous of him because he was highly favored of the father. Amen. It didn't look like his life mattered because they sold him off into slavery. And then once he got into slavery, look, he got accused of trumped up charges and got put in prison. Amen. But God knew that his life mattered. Because if you read the story, you got to Genesis chapter 50 and verse 20. He says, what you thought for evil, God thought it for good. His life mattered at the time, amen? Then I look at the life of Moses. Moses lived a life of luxury. Grew up as Pharaoh's daughter's son, amen? But one day, he, was a, he became a murderer. And then he became a fugitive of justice. Went from the palace to the backside of the desert. But God had a purpose and a plan for Moses, Amen? God, God had a bush burning that wasn't being consumed and caught Moses' attention. Moses found out from God, what's my purpose, God? He said, I want you to go to Egypt and deliver my people. A purpose. God has a purpose for all of our lives. Amen? Then I see the story of Gideon. Gideon had bad self-esteem. Amen? 
Oh, the boy said, look, my family, my family is the poorest in Manassas. And I'm the least of my family. Boy had a bad self-image, amen. But God called him a mighty man of valor. Because he said, Gideon, I got a purpose for you. He said, God, if you got a purpose for me, look, I want to give you a test. Make that fleece wet on this side and dry on the other side. And I know that is you. Once God showed him that, he said, well, God, flip the script. Do it the other way. Make that side wet and this side dry. God did it. Now watch this now. God needed Gideon to be the leader of an army of folk to, to defeat his adversary. His adversary had 135,000 soldiers. Gideon had 32,000. And God said, Gideon, you got too many. God, I'm going to fight 135, and I only got 32,000. But God says, that's too many. Because the purpose I have for you is not for you to get the glory, but for me to get the glory. So God gets Gideon to go from 32,000 down to 10,000, and the 10,000 was still too many. From the 10,000 down to 300, and God said, I can win with that one. Because I got a purpose for you, Gideon. Amen. See, see, we look at numbers and think that, well, we don't have the 10,000 yet. But God said, I can use what you got. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Yeah, yeah, so, so Gideon's life had purpose, amen. Y'all remember Naaman? Naaman, uh, the leper, Naaman? I don't want to talk about Naaman. I want to talk about the little maid because she had purpose. Amen. Y'all remember Naaman's wife had a maid. And one day he found himself in leprosy. But the maid said, hey, hey, look, if, if you go down to the man of God, he could cure you of that leprosy. Now, nobody would look at the maid as somebody as significant. She didn't have an education. She was just doing house chores. But God said, I could use her. Her life mattered to God because now I'm going to connect her to him so he can get his deliverance. Amen. Oh, my goodness. You might be saying today, you know, Pastor Sharp, I don't have an education. I'm not highly educated, but God can use you. Yeah. Pastor Sharp, I don't have this degree or that degree, but, but God can use you. I don't live in this house or that, or that house. I don't have this amount of money, but God can use you right where you are, amen? Yeah. Because your life has purpose, amen? Yeah. Woo, Jesus, amen, amen, amen. <laughs> Nehemiah, <laughs> Nehemiah was just a, a, a sip away from death. You say he was? He was what? Yeah, Nehemiah was a cupbearer, and Nehemiah had purpose in him, amen? Now watch this now. It was Nehemiah's job to taste the food of the king. So if somebody wanted to kill the king, they would kill Nehemiah first. So he was a taste and a drink away from death. But God had purpose in him, amen? He, God placed a passion in his heart for, for Jerusalem. The walls were down, amen? And, 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 and watch this now. Because he had purpose, God gave him favor. Somebody say favor. God gave him favor with the king when the king wrote him a letter and said, look, you're going to get whatever supplies you need. Amen? If you just bring this letter to anybody you want and say the king gave you favor, amen, you'll get anything you want. Woo, Jesus, amen. See, see, see some of you right now, all you need is a letter from God. <laughs> Here's your letter right here, baby. Right here. You got your letter. All you got to do is go show for what God said about you, Amen. Amen, amen. And then David, 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 life had purpose. Yeah. Watch this now. His father and his brothers didn't even think he was worthy to come in the house. He was out minding the sheep when the prophet showed up. The prophet came to anoint somebody to be the next king of Israel. But his daddy and his brothers didn't think he was full of purpose. But I heard God say that David was a man after my own heart. Ooh, Jesus. Amen. He, 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 he's a shepherd of sheep, but I'm going to make him the shepherd of men. Amen. David's life had purpose. Amen. And I just want to tell you today that, that your life had purpose. But, but many times we have this misconception about what purpose is. Go to Luke chapter number 12. Amen. Luke chapter number 12. See, we, we put emphasis on the wrong thing, Brother Pew. <clears throat> we put emphasis on people who have stuff. To make it seem like they are the people with purpose. But I'm here today to tell you that if you don't have stuff, because your life is not consistent of the stuff that you have obtained, your purpose is based upon what God has said about you. Luke chapter number 12. Look at verse number 15, Luke chapter 12, verse number 15. Look what he says. Watch this. And he said unto them, take heed. And beware of covetousness, 
For a man's life consisted not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. So my purpose is not based on my car. My purpose is not based upon, upon my house. My purpose is not based upon the money I have in my pocket. My purpose is based upon what God said about me. And God says, before you were born, before you were formed in your mama's belly, I knew you. I sanctified you. I set you apart. I gave you a purpose before you ever got to the earth. Amen? So my purpose is not based upon my possessions. Neither is my purpose based upon, watch this now, based upon my position or my prestige. See, we will lift up everybody that got a doctor in front of their name, Dr. So-and-so. And we think that the doctor is bigger than you. Or the lawyer so-and-so or this person with a, with a, with a title. Well, listen, your, 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 your purpose is not based upon your position or your prestige. Because look, watch this now. Even Jesus' disciples had an issue with that. They, they start tripping. Amen? What do you, you mean, Pastor, they were tripping? You remember the sons of Zebedee? They thought that, look, my purpose was based upon my position. So they go to Jesus on the side. And they say, Jesus, you know, their mama, let my son, one of my sons sit on your left hand and the other one on the right hand. A position of power and authority. Because that's what they thought purpose was all about. And Jesus says to them, look, you don't understand. It's not based upon your position. It's not based upon your title, amen? Can you drink of the cup I'm about to drink of? And he said this, if you want to be great in the kingdom, become the servant. Oh, my goodness. So your prestige and your position, look, if it's not about being a servant, he said, you're missing the whole point. Amen, amen, amen. Not only that, but, but my, my purpose is not based upon my pedigree. Somebody say pedigree. See, we, we think that people whose parents are well off or they, they matriculated in this college, you got generations of, of college degrees, amen? And so their pedigree seems to be high up on the, on the scale. But watch this now. Jesus himself wasn't a person of pedigree from a natural perspective. No, 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 no. One of his disciples said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? They were talking about the boy hometown. I mean, gee, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Because your pedigree don't meet the standard of being a savior. Your pedigree don't meet the standard of being an a, 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 a emancipator. No, Jesus, nothing good comes out of Beaumont, right? Because people think that you got to have a pedigree. You got to come from somewhere. And even if you came from the other side of the track or a sharpshooter house, God can use you. Amen. See, see, look, 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 whoever's willing, God can use you. And you don't have to have a, 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 a pedigree to get that done. Woo, Jesus, amen, amen. And then, then, then watch this now. Then some people think their purpose is based upon their uh, presentation. What you mean by presentation, Pastor? I mean... Go back and look at the life of David that I was just talking about a second ago. The presentation was his brothers looked like they were kings. I mean, they were good-looking men. I mean, they were six foot three, full of muscles, kind of like me. Oh, oh, y'all laughing at my 5'10 frame. Don't worry about that, all right? On the inside, I'm a giant. I'm a giant. Give me some fire, Lady Gwen. She said she wanted somebody tall, dark, and handsome. I've met the qualifications. Watch this now. Even though they had presentation, they couldn't get the anointing. What you mean, Pastor? Well, when Samuel tried to pour the oil on the first seven, nothing happened. They looked good. And then, then watch it now. He asked, he asked the daddy, do you have another son? And when David walked in, he like, oh, he can't be the one. Because his presentation don't look like, he was just a ruddy fellow. You know, he, 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 was just, he wasn't, he wasn't a, the tall, dark, and handsome like they thought he should be. And look what God says. Y'all looking at the outside of a man. I'm looking at the condition of his heart. Amen, because his heart is more important to me than this outward appearance. Okay, watch this now. Watch this. Watch this. That's why I say it doesn't matter how you come to church. 
<laughs> how you dress. I ain't worried about how you dress. I mean, as long as you cover yourself up, I'm cool. Amen? Look, look, see, see, we have grown up in church that says you got to wear a suit, you got to wear a tie, you have to do this, you have to do that, you can't wear this and you can't wear that. Who said that? The president, look, you can have the longest skirt in the church and still have the longest skirt in the church. <laughs> Did I work that day? I worked that day. See, see, it's not about what you look like on the outside that God is looking for. God is looking at the condition of your heart. Do you love me like you say you do? Or are you just professing with your mouth or really do you believe that in your heart? See, that's what this is all about. This is not about, see, my purpose is not based upon how I look on the outside. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, man, you can dress this. Look, Jesus said this. You hypocrites. You dress up the outside. But on the inside, you're like dead men's bones. In other words, you stink. You rotten on the inside. You, you, you talk a good game. But is your heart really with me? And so many people come to church just for a show. They know how to say the amen at the right time. Amen. They know how to clap on the beat every time. But God says, your heart is far from me. It's not about the presentation. It's not about the presentation. I'm not looking at how you look on the outside. I'm looking at you based upon the condition of your heart. Do you love me like you say you do? He says, love me with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. Then he says, love your neighbor as yourself. Are you, are you following the tenets of his word? That's what really matters. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Okay, pastor. How can I know my purpose? How can I know my purpose? I got to go back to the maker of a thing to understand how the thing ought to function. Many months ago, I did, a, I did an illustration and I had Brother Dennis to get me a chair. And Dennis brought the chair up, and I, I sat in the chair because that's why the maker designed the chair, so that somebody could sit in it. But how many of you can attest to the fact that you use the chair as a ladder? Anybody? That wasn't the purpose of the chair. The, the, the purpose of this chair is not for me to stand up in it to change out the light bulb. The purpose of this chair is for somebody to sit down in it. See, many times we abuse the purpose because we just don't know. Okay, okay, how many of you have ever pulled up a chair? You're sitting on your couch, and you pull up a chair to put your feet on it because you don't have an ottoman. Amen? That's not the purpose of the chair. The chair wasn't designed for you to relax and put your feet up in it. But how many of us have ever done that? Okay, see, it's just about the whole church. You, you... You got to go back to the maker to find out how the thing should operate, okay? Your body wasn't made for you to be laying down with everybody. I'm just trying to tell you, I'm trying to go back to the maker of the thing. The maker says your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Amen? He said you just can't do what you want to do because, look, I made your body for me to live in. But many people abuse the body. You put alcohol in it, you smoke a blunt in it, you do this in it. And your body wasn't made for that. Your body was made to worship God, yeah. to be the temple of the Holy Ghost, that the Holy Ghost will be housed in. And then he said, he said it this way, why don't you just glorify God in your body, which is his, because you've been bought with a price. See, I got to go back to the maker and find out, God, how did you make me? God made you to be another speaking spirit. I got to go back to what God, how God designed me. God made me another speaking spirit. He said, I made you in my likeness, and after my likeness, and you're just like me. I made you just like me. Well, God, how did you operate? I operated by opening my mouth and speaking. And many times, because you don't understand how you've been made, you've been saying the wrong things. <laughs> Amen. You, you have been saying the wrong thing. And watch this now. Because we've been designed to be another speaking spirit, everything in the universe, everything in the universe is listening to what we say. 
And once we say it, it's like a magnetic force that joins all of the forces together and comes for you. Whoo, Jesus, amen. Amen. So y'all sitting back like, huh? Huh? No, no, you got to understand. God seen nothing and spoke something out of it. He said, he say, he say, I, I don't like the darkness. I don't like the void. I'm going to speak light into it. And he said, now nah, I made you just like me. And what you, if you don't like what you see, change it by what you say. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, just come be bad. Don't, don't worry about it. So I got to go, go back to the makeup of the thing. God, how did you design me? What, what's, what's my purpose, God? I need to know my purpose. How many of you want to know your purpose? Want to know your purpose? Okay. We have a corporate purpose. And then each of us have an individual purpose, okay? Corporately, our responsibility is to represent God here and there. Amen? Our corporate pur purpose. See, every one of us, okay, okay. Y'all remember the day, y'all remember back in the day where whenever the pastor called for a work day at the church, everybody showed up. Everybody showed up. Why? Because this is our church. Amen. We coming to do something at our church. Now, folk, because they don't understand a corporate purpose, amen, they be like, no, that's your church. We, we just come to visit you on Sundays. That's some of y'all attitude. We just come on Sunday, and we just come every other Wednesday. But our co corporate purpose is to represent God. Secondly, our corporate purpose is to care for the things of God. Yeah, yeah. Amen. We have this united purpose that we got to care for everything that God made. Mm. Thirdly, we have to express the lordship of Jesus in the earth. God needs us to be uh, ambassadors for him. Yeah. Amen. More than just you coming to church on a Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Ambassadors live outside the church. Then God says, I need you to be fruitful and to multiply at your corporate purpose. Be fruitful and multiply. In other words, make some little use. See, see, when Miss Kay was talking about God's going to use us, that, that's because God needs us, watch this now, to multiply and replenish the earth. God needs us to go get folks saved. Hey, let me tell you about Jesus. So that you can give your life to God. Why? Because we got to reproduce ourselves. Amen. 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 We got to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. But we can't replenish if you ain't talking to nobody. Yeah. Telling God, telling people how good God has been. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, get in nobody's business. <laughs> Hold up a second. Somebody got in your business and got you saved. Now you're going to heaven, but you want everybody else to go to hell. Much love to y'all. Much love. Much love. Much love. Praise the Lord. Uh huh. Then I got to look at, from my corporate purpose, I got to look at my individual purpose. Why am I here? Anybody ever ask yourself why you here? Why am I here? What, 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 what God, God, what you brought me here for? I'm trying to find out what you brought me here for. Why am I here? Well, watch this now. I can know my individual purpose based upon what God has said to me. Amen? Yeah. Many of you are moving too fast for you to hear the voice of God. Wow. That's why you can't hear your purpose. Because wow. you're shucking the job. You're going and coming. You, I, mean, you, I mean, you don't have no time. I mean, you are just so busy. Man, that God, look, God trying to speak to you and all you hear is... Because you're moving too quick. You're moving too quick. God can't talk to you because you ain't, you're not standing still. Amen. You're always coming and you're always going. God said, how can I talk to you? How can I tell you your purpose? And you don't have an ear for me. Another reason why people can't hear God's voice when it comes down to your purpose is it could be because you're living in sin. See, we, see, see, the church have stopped talking about sin as if it doesn't exist. Yeah, 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 that, 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 that's plenty of sin. Yeah, that's plenty of sin. Amen? 
And see, sin is what blocks us from hearing the voice of God. You, you just, listen, listen, my brothers and my sisters. The standard is God's word. If God says he don't like it, he don't want you doing it. But pastor, but pastor, I was behind somebody and I seen a bumper sticker that says, if, if, if it feel good till you do it. Well, I'm just doing it. But is it right? See, a lot of the stuff that we encounter, it's not because the devil is busy. It's the consequence of sin. <laughs> it's just your harvest coming up. And we try to blame the devil, which is the next point. The reason why you're not hearing God is because of the enemy. But, but watch this now. Let me go back to the sin issue. Sometimes it's just because you're doing something wrong. You want God to heal you, your body, but you haven't even questioned what you're putting in your body. You haven't even questioned them pig feet. <laughs> Oxtails. Oh, Lord Jesus. You, you just can't eat all that stuff and expect for your body to function like God designed it to function. So now your blood pressure is high and you want God to heal you, but you still want to go back to the chillings. Amen. And, and, and so we, we want God, and God said, no, I'm going to heal your body, but I need you to cooperate because this is the only body you got. Amen? You can't fornicate and commit adultery and think that God is pleased and you want to hear from God? No. No, you can't do that. You just can't do it. It's time for us to grow up as the church. If you want to understand your purpose, you got to get out of the sin. Go to Psalm 66. I think it's in Psalm 66. Watch this. Psalm 66. Look at verse number 18. Psalm 66, verse number 18. Look what he says. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Amen? If I have a lifestyle of sin, God say, I ain't hearing that. And then Isaiah 59 verse 2 says, it's your sin and your iniquity that has separated us. That's what keeps us from God. Amen? So if I can't hear my purpose, it could be I need to look at my life. Listen to me now. Because some of you are sitting there like, I ain't going to say nothing on that point. Because that's where I'm at. And you wonder why you don't know your purpose? It's because of the sin. It's because of the sin. And you think that because God hadn't come and, 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 and open up the earth and swallowed you up that you're getting away with it. So you created a cover-up plan. And God see right through the cover, amen? You can't hide nothing from God. You don't think that you can just go to another city and do your dirt and come back to Beaumont and think that every day, nobody ever seen me. Amen? Remember I said earlier that the Holy Ghost lives inside of us. So everywhere you go, God is there. Where can you go and hide from God? Think about that for a second. Where can you go that God is not there? And you want to, but Pastor, I can't hear from God. I don't, I, I don't hear God speak to me. I, I just don't hear God speak to me. I, you know, that, and the reason could be because of sin. Now, I'm not saying that you're not going to mess up. But I'm talking about this is a lifestyle for some folk, man. This is a lifestyle, and, and they come to church, and they want to lift up holy hands, and God say, put your dirty hands down. <laughs> Amen? Put your hands down. 
You need to go to the altar and get that thing right. Whoo, Jesus. Amen. And then once you have confessed that thing, go tell Earl to give you a key back. See, y'all got quiet. Y'all were like, what? What you mean get my key back from Earl? You know that Earl got a key to your house? And every time about the 15th of the month when your light bill is due, Earl show up. Then after, after y'all done finish, he leaves something on the, on the end table. Something to take care of you, your bill. With a little extra to get you something to eat. I said, you got to stop that foolishness. Amen. If you want to hear my voice, you got to stop the sin. My beloved, hear what, you, what I'm saying today. The reason why many of you are not hearing God's voice clearly is because of the sin issue. And watch this now. You want God to shout it to you, but he's not going to shout it to you. Because God is an intimate God. And he wants you close to his bosom. Watch this now. The Bible says he speaks to us through a still, small voice. God whispers to us. Y'all yeah, remember uh, back in the maybe 70s or the 80s, there was a commercial that says, if you want to capture someone's attention, what? Whisper. See, God wants to capture our attention, but he wants us to, he wants to whisper to us. God is not on the mountain shouting at us. God ain't come through the earthquake and talk to us. He say, he say, I want my beloved people to be underneath my wing. Next to my heart. To hear my heart beat. Amen. And to know me more intimately. God wants to speak to us, I mean, face to face. And the reason that's keeping us from his face is because sin is in between. This is how you're going to know your purpose. Get out of sin. Get out of sin. Get out of sin. Get out of sin. No, I'm going to stay down. I'm, I'm, cause, cause I know this is what God wants me to be right now. You need to get out of sin. So that God can do something marvelous in our lives. Come on, people. Listen to me now. Don't shut me off. Don't shut me off. You got to hear what God is saying. And he's telling me, calling my people. They, the reason they ain't hear me, because they're doing some stuff I don't like. Y'all remember when Moses was going up to meet God? Moses had all of his attire on. And God looked at Moses and said, hold on, you got to stop right there. He said, you got to take off some things, because you're going to track some dirt in my house. Take off your shoes. But the ground that you're standing on is holy ground. There's some things that are in believers' lives they need to take off. Okay. I remember growing up as a little boy, you couldn't just walk and go in my grandmother's house any kind of way. That woman beat you down. She made you leave your shoes at the door because she didn't want you tracking mud in her house. If Granny, if, if, if uh, Granny can say that, and Granny just used a switch or a belt, God is saying, "Take look, take some stuff off. Don't track that stuff in my house." And it's sad to say that there's some stuff happening in God's house that God is not pleased with. I am seeing, I am seeing. Watch this now. I am seeing sins at such a rapid pace that homosexuality has become acceptable in the body of Christ. I am seeing that men and women of God, oh Jesus, they are contaminating the whole flock by their lifestyle. And God's going to hold them accountable. So if I'm not hearing from God, it could be because I'm in sin. 
And the final thing, I'll, and I'll end with this, the final thing that causes us not to hear from God, because if I'm going to hear my purpose on why I matter, the other obstacle is we have satanic, uh, 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 we have an enemy that's trying to block our answer. You remember in Daniel's chapter number, I think it's chapter number three, or six, it's chapter six, where Daniel prays to God, but the Bible says that the angel came to him and said, hey, listen, God heard you the first day. But it was, it was 21 days before I could get the answer to you because you had satanic interference. Well, see, we have an adversary that's trying to keep the answer for our lives away from us. Why? Because he know that if you ever know your purpose, you're going to tear his kingdom down. See, that's, 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 the, that's the thing. The reason why the devil don't want you to know your purpose is because you are a threat to his kingdom. You're a threat. And if you're not a threat, you need to check yourself. If the devil ain't mad at you, he ain't shooting no darts at you, you really need to check yourself. <laughs> oh, Jesus. If the devil ain't on your trail to kill you, steal from you, or destroy you, check yourself. Amen? Now, now, next week I'll, I'll, I'll get to more of how do you know your purpose. Because I, I believe that each of us need to know why we, we're here, why we exist. Because you could drift aimlessly in the earth just doing something, and it's not what God wants you to do. Okay? Well, I really want you to know why you're here. Because if you know why you're here, the Bible says that, that, that the body is many members. Okay? With different purposes and different functions. Well, if you don't know your purpose, uh, and she don't know her purpose, and he don't know his purpose, guess what? Now the body is, is disabled. Because everybody can't do the same, same thing. So, so I got to get you to know your purpose so that the body can function properly. And when you know it, man, now it's time to operate in it. Amen? All right? All right. Praise the Lord. Amen.